or Supreme Ambient Light Rejection Screen Paint using Ambient Light Rejection Technology Game. So today we are going to paint a purple projection screen. Purple projection screen. Hmm. Purple. All right. So I'm trying to figure out whether or not I want to paint it on this piece of styrofoam behind the purple screen or if I just want to get the official 92 inch and just paint over that because I don't have to do demonstrations on that anymore anyway, period. Uh, due to the fact that I already have a blue screen for demonstration right up there on the wall, right there. All right, so I think I'm going to go downstairs and get the 100 inch uh, from there and do that. But I have 100 inch, 92 inch. Might as well just paint over this screen because I already have a screen already, which is my main screen. So I'll use this screen right here for the demonstration. So this is what I'm going to use. All right. All right. All right. So I decided to instead of painting the styrofoam screen, I am going to paint the fixed frame 100 inch, I don't know, 90, 92 inch, 92 inch screen. So I'm going to paint that one instead. I gotta get me a stand for my Facebook display for doing this Facebook demonstrations. Let's see, I should be good about right there. Stay right there. Stay right there for a minute. All right, so I'm just going to basically get my corners and all that stuff. Kind of showed you how to do that already. If you haven't seen that, and then I'll post a video where you can actually see those demonstrations done of me uh, taking the screen. I have to go back upstairs and order me a graphic card because I decided watching something instead of building me the whole PC from the ground up. 
probably would have cost me more money and getting my parts in probably would have taken forever. I get parts in. I decided to buy a Dell 710, which automatically came with um, an i5 processor. Uh, came with uh, 16. No, came with um, 16 gigs of RAM. Um, it came with uh, 16 gigs of RAM. Came with two terabytes of solid state. Look at that going up in the background. On my phone. Came with two, uh, two gig, 16 gigabytes of solid state. And um, so uh, the only thing on it that I'm changing on it is the fact that it's a low, pro, a low I need a low profile card, but uh, the only thing I'm changing on it because the requirements for using uh, the, uh, the mapping software requires for you to have a pretty good PC. And the PCs I have in here are not strong enough to run, run the programs. So that's why I decided to get a, a Dell 1070. But before buying it, I had to make sure it had a PCI slot so I can add in a more advanced graphic card. But usually those particular computers, even though they have i5s and i7s in them, um, they, uh, they, were, they, had, they used a GPU. So basically what they're doing is integrated video and they're basically just taking memory off your your pre-existing video for that and that's not going to work so i got me uh i mean a lot of people don't like the card i heard but i need it for work so i don't really don't care i'm not gaming on it anyway so it for work so i decided to get a gtx uh 1650 uh with four gigs uh that will work perfectly ddr i think it's a ddr3 um, but the RAM on it, I think, is uh, DDR3 at uh, 1060. That's 16 gigs. So that's pretty good right from the door. So the PC altogether cost me around $230. And then I went out and bought the graphic card for $150. And that's it. And I already got a Wi-Fi card upstairs, which didn't work on the other PC for some reason. So I'm going to basically install a Wi-Fi network card into it so I can run it completely wireless when I want to take it outside uh, for, um, for doing outside uh, demonstrations with 3D mapping. I know some people say, why don't you get a laptop? I don't particularly like laptops. I, I just don't like them something that I just I like a machine I can open it up and work in the inside and I don't like laptops I'm pretty sure people can work on inside laptops but that's just never my field I like desktops I can program them I just can't when it comes to open them up and swapping up parts and all that stuff I really don't care to go down that road so we get over there. there we go so that's what I'm going to be working on which I'm excited to do. Right under my screen. That's all done. This is moving things underneath. I'll have to do the thing with the sock, I know. I forgot the corners. So corners. I'm not trying to be quite rude here, but I mean, I've done pretty much uh, all I could possibly think of when it comes to home theater screens. And don't get me wrong, I'm never going to give up on that part of it because I do like designing home theater screens, but I need something else. I need a whole nother, I mean, not to be rude or anything, but I'm getting a bit bored with it all. I like basically designing screen paints and all, but I think, I don't know. I mean, once I get a chance to work on the new stuff, um, the new technology which I'm working on, that's gonna be much fun. All right, so I 
the technology I have now, like I said, I want something more advanced than what I have. And I never tried 3D mapping, so like I said, I want to jump into that field and see what it's like. Got a bunch of companies right now that are interested and want to know why. Want to know what I'm going to be doing next as in that field. So the cool thing about the purple technology basically it displays that we have a coating that can read color. Black silvers have a little bit of that coating in it. A little bit of it. You know, it's, it's enough to have a gray screen read. That's how the screen is able to read the contrast levels. Because there's a little bit of that coating in there. Not enough for anybody to break down and figure it out because they won't. But it has a little bit of coating in it. This would have been a nice screen when St. Rose, the game came out. Oh man. That purple. What is that? Amazing. Some purple LED lights around it. So I have, oh, I have LED lights on the back of this screen. I gotta finish up the rest of my LED lights on the back of them. I do have LED lights on the back of this screen. I just gotta order some more. Up my, I've done this so many times. Show people how to do this so many times on how to paint a screen. Okay, this one for demonstrations. I won't really get a chance to do the real demonstrations until I get uh, until I get some um, my uh, my uh, 3D mapping projector in. All right, so I'm going to change out my roller to my roller. Basically, it's a little dry. driving this over to Facebook. We got more investors over there to tell you the truth. You know what? I should. Yeah, we just do it here live and then the base up folks over there. I'm going to begin paint, ouch, painting the screen. Just bump the heebie jeebies out of that one right there on my foot. PS4 out of the way. I think I'm going to run my PS4 through this. All right, so let me get something to make sure stir up correctly.
Okay. Turn my lights on on this side. That's the reason why I tape up the entire screen because I have a bad habit of the roller bumping on the side. Really good roller. I had to find a few things. There are about some more of these. I like these rollers. They're great to be good. They're way better than the ones I was using. Way better. Wow. You might recommend these for now on for everybody. I don't think I paid for these. That's for the cheapest ones. These are the cheapest ones, really? They're great to they're good. How much were these rollers? And, and buy me another, buy me these 12, almost 12 packs of them. Those are really cool rollers. Let me see, I need. There's a stop right there.
keep in mind it's not about the views. There's a company that requested this demonstration. But thank you for coming in and watching. They prefer for the demonstration to be done live so they know there's no tricks.
see, all this may joke because the screen is purple, but the sad thing about it, they don't understand the technology behind it. Those see it are fascinated by it, and they like it. But I got the naysayers that don't understand what I'm actually displaying, therefore I don't expect for them to understand. You have to be way outside the box to understand what the technology is going to do. Same thing like the blue screens. The blue screens are just displaying, it's not the color of the screen, it's the fact the screen can read color. That's the part they missed. So like I said, this is first test stage of the technology on a larger scale. I did it a couple days ago on a smaller one, so I have to do it on an official screen size. I've painted over this screen, I think, four or five times. So when people ask me questions about how many times can I paint over the screen, do I have to prime it first thing? Just paint over top of it. That's all you do. All our technologies run the same way. The reason why I'm doing 3D mapping technology is because I'm actually going to go outside my circle, way outside my circle, and start dealing with bigger companies. It doesn't mean I'm selling out. It just means basically I'm just advancing to another level. I like doing these technology right here. Don't get me wrong. I will always provide amazing screen paints, but I just see I think I need to be somewhere else. I'm still going to make. I said still going to make screen paint. Just there's another level that's calling me right now. And that 3D mapping is calling me like crazy. So I've already started purchasing half of my, I just bought my computer, graphic card, all that stuff I needed. I get the machinery tomorrow. And I can start working on my new level. It's not enough to see it flat. After a while, you design enough flat screens, you don't want to see a flat image. You want to see the image come at you and see it come to life. That new setup I'm getting, the technology I can build around that is going to be insane. I can go to another level now. Oh man, this is gonna be so freaking cool. I cannot wait. I don't even have the projector yet, and this stuff is already being developed for it. Alright, so we gotta do to cut this stuff on. Anything else is up here? in here, so I'm going to go here. The screen's practically dry already, almost. Told you, it reads color. The screen's purple, it's displaying blue and white. And so I was trying to explain when I was changing the colors of the screen, there's a technology embedded in that coating that allows to read the color off the projector. And the reason why it's done purple is just a simple fact, it's just a display that it reads color. If I do this on a gray screen, which we did do it on the gray screens, and no one believed us. Like, no, the guy was like, no, it's impossible. Uh, a screen paint can't read color. Yes, it can. You just have to know how to do it. You're looking at it right there. I haven't even turned on the PS4 yet. So it's kind of hard to understand it when you look at a gray screen. But if you look at a screen that's purple and it's displaying blue off the projector, which means the coating inside of that blue paint is basically allowing the projector, that blue paint, to recognize blue, not purple. White, not purple. And this all comes from God's ability. I keep telling you over and over and over again. Nobody believes when I tell them that. God gives me the knowledge to do this. But that's when I was sitting upstairs and I was talking about the technology. And they said, no, it's not possible. And Lord, so let me show you something. Let me show you something that's going to blow their mind. Let's make a blue screen. You did a blue screen. All right, that's not enough for them. Let's show them what we could do with a purple screen. And I, you heard me mention that on the camera. I was saying, I should do a purple screen. I got an idea on how to do it. And there you are. Purple screen that can read blue and white. Which means we have a technology now that allows the projector to read color. 
calibration your calibrating your projector is old technology now. Let's go over to I gotta put something on here real quick. It's gonna go out of play. I gotta find something to eat. Of course, it sounds silly to you. You can't think outside the box. That's the problem. You're only one sided. That's it. You would probably, for you, saying it sounds silly would be the same person that would say eight track players. Someone developed a CD player? Oh, that sounds silly to me. So, that's the reason why people like you are ignored when it comes to developing new stuff because, new technology, because you're the naysayers. You're the same so people that say it can't be done. If it were people like you, we wouldn't have flight. We wouldn't have the Model T. We wouldn't have a lot of things that we have now that you enjoy every day. So, uh, yeah, I expect that to come from people like you. But goodbye. The people sit there and say, oh, it sounds silly to me. Yeah, these are the same people who sat there and watched the Wright brothers build an airplane in their barn and say, that sounds silly to me. Who in their right mind builds an airplane at that particular time when flight really wasn't existing, only through balloons? But thank God these, these guys decided not to give up because now you can get on an airplane and fly from A to B. Can you imagine taking a hot air balloon to go to California to Philadelphia? I wonder what that would turn out to be like. That'd be a complete nightmare, wouldn't it? What about the Pony Express when it first started off? No one actually decided to actually invent new ideas to be able to communicate, like the telegram and all the other stuff that we have now. That why we have these phones now with these built-in computers in them. It took someone to actually think of that, and it took another person to actually try to tear them down from doing it. Thank goodness they pursued with it. This doesn't bother me. I expect people to think this way. They're supposed to. And these are the people I like the most. You know why? Because those are the ones that make me say I can do it when I tell you when I say I can't. And that's why you're looking at a purple screen that's reading the PS4 menu in blue in multiple colors. Now the company that's interested in the technology doesn't think it's silly. Neither does the paycheck. Thinks it's silly either. And I told you, I got a fellow right now in Philadelphia who wants to spend, pay, gave me $2,000 because he wants an eagle green screen in his man cave to match all his eagle gear in his cave. That's what he wants. And he's got the money. I told you, people got the money. They'll pay it. They will pay it. Two grand. I haven't agreed to it due to the fact that, like I said, this stuff has to be, that coding has to be patent. That's why. But he's willing to wait. And he's willing to pay whatever it costs. Let's go down just a little bit. There we go. We're dry already. Screen's dry. What people need to do, the naysayers need to do, they need to educate themselves. And go back. Look at all the things you have in your house that make your life easier. And think about it. It took somebody to invent and think of those ideas to make your life easier. And I'm pretty sure they dealt with their fair share of naysayers. Everybody does. But people like me don't care. All right, controller is upstairs, or did I leave it upstairs? Let me see what the PS4 controller is sitting at right now. I think I left it upstairs on the charger, I'm pretty sure. Probably yes, on the charger upstairs. All right, I'm gonna grab my charger, there my PS4.
I was thinking about P crazy inventions that people probably got the most flack over. Toilet paper. Can you imagine somebody coming up, Scott Tissue, who sat there and said that, hey, look, I got an idea. I'm going to make a paper that you can wipe your butt with. And I bet you everybody laughed at the dinner table. I probably would have laughed too. I probably would have sat there and laughed at the table like, wait, wait, wait. You want to make, uh, you want to make toilet paper to wipe your butt with? <laughs> Why? Like, no, no, think about it. Think about it. You know what I mean? Like, it would be the softest toilet paper around to wipe your butt with. Right? I think it's a million dollar idea. It could be a billion dollar idea. Who knows? And I'm guaranteed the banks probably laughed at them. Other places probably laughed like, really, toilet paper? Like, nah, you got to be crazy. Now they're a multi-million dollar corporation. Hmm. Think about that. Or the person who invented, invented hangers for hanging up your clothes. So you wanted the advice that allows you to hang up your clothes. That sounds a little bit uh, far-fetched. I don't think you'll make any money in that. Pretty sure it got turned down a few times. You won't make any money in that at all. Multi-billion dollar corporation industry. Hangers. People buy them every single day. So, like I said, be careful what you say nay to. It isn't the purpose that the screen is purple. It's the fact that the screen is reading color, even though the surface is purple. And if the surface is purple, shouldn't all the colors be in purple? But well, they're not. Because the coating that we embedded into the purple paint, and yes, it is purple paint, allows the screen to be able to read color, even though the surface is a different color. Feel free to paint your screen. No, I'm gonna tell you that. <laughs> You might like the outcome of that one. So feel free to paint your screens with purple paint and see what happens. No, don't do that. Don't don't do that. I'll tell you the biggest challenge would be the biggest challenge I think would be, and I, I doubt. I'm not even gonna even try even try attempt it. I probably wouldn't even try to attempt to do it. To get a um the screen to read 100% contrast level. Of course, I would obviously the black screen in seconds. Because that means we could make a white screen read 100% black level. That would be insane, but uh, I don't know. It's sketchy on that one. I don't even have a confident thought on that one right there to begin with. But it is interesting to think about it, though. Yeah, so I said calibrating a projector. Yeah, that's done. You have to calibrate your projector if your screen can automatically recognize the color that's coming from the projector. tempted to do that green screen now. It's in my head. I'm going to have to see if it'll work on that too. I guess we'll order green paint. See what happens. It's not about mixing grays. When people, when they make paint, they mix gray paint and black paint, white paint and black paint to make their screen paint. 
this is beyond that. This is this is now coding, coding engineering, which basically, like I said, we figured out a way to design a code, and I'm not going to tell you what the code is, to drop it in anything, which means we take purple paint, green paint, whatever paint we want, we drop this stuff into it, it reacts like this. The screen is like Black Diamond and Elite and all them other companies. They can't relate to it because it doesn't fit their category. It doesn't fit any category. Can't go to ABS forums and say, hey, I want some information on a purple screen. They can't give you any information. It doesn't exist. Neither does a blue screen. Well, blue screen, if you're doing basically for special effects, yeah. But not the whole theater setup. white levels and do this you know how hard it is to get white levels to loop on a black screen you know how even harder it is to poop on a blue and 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 purple screen nah, that's another that's another whole nother story on his own god is amazing like i said it's amazing Whew. it's a relief now, this, I haven't painted on anything bigger. The biggest screen I painted on was the one I actually showed off in the last demonstration. So this is the biggest I've actually painted on with 190, no, 92 inches, sorry, 192, 92 inches. I had a friend of mine, everything in this house is all purple. He's kind of, he likes purple. So I mean, as perfect as I can, that would be fantastic in my studio. Like it's purple, it would match everything in my in my, in my setup. He's a cool dude. <laughs> so we'll think about that one. So I get the paperwork finished. It. <laughs> what does purple look like on a purple screen? I want you to be able to see up close. So you can see that skin tone is white. There's no purple or anything in, in the color. I mean, that's green. That coating is reading the colors that's producing from the projector. Sorry about that. Let's go back in there. There we go. You have no idea how happy I am to have this. No idea how happy I am to have this. That's why I shot it from that projector and said, no, 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 no. We almost launched this stuff. We almost launched it la th th this week. It would have came out this week if we launched it. Man, I got it from that projector. says, nope, nope, can't do it. Can't, it's got to be locked. It's got to be locked. And I just realized what the screen was actually doing. 
I'm thinking all the while the surface, it's not the surface, it was the coating that was in the surface and that blue paint that was making it see color. It was reading it, and I mean reading it extremely good. So I'm thinking, okay, nope, nope, we gotta lock this. That's what I said. Monday morning, I got on the phone, talked to an attorney, I said, look, this is what I need to do. A patent attorney, we need to do this, we need to do that, so and so and so and so, so we can get a patent pending, so and so and so. It's not just for the little hobbyists, it's for basic big major more likely for the bigger companies. That's what it's for. Because someone took, wants to call me down in an NDA for me to come down and do some virtual Skype call, whatever they want to do, and they want samples of this. Go ahead, you can have a sample of it. Because there's patents and copyrights locked onto this thing. So go ahead and play around if you want. You know what I mean? Get sued. And they're not going to do that. I usually don't have too many companies that will do that. But they will check under my paperwork to see if my patents and everything are legit. They will check that. And before they even buy it. Say they want to buy the technology from me. Well, they'll have to go in and they'll have to check and see if I have the rights to this technology. They'll check my right, everything. And once all that shows up that I have the rights to it, because we're the only ones to develop it, then they'll basically start making offers on buying it. Because not only do you have to buy the rights to, well, they have to buy the technology and the ingredients, but they have to buy the rights to, um, to my technology by my patents. saying that when I see people take a look at this stuff man this is technology you have access to right now one of these days I won't be here anymore same technology we show you black screens that can produce images and fully lit environments which I showed in that demonstration that screen pulling images off the ceiling one of these days like I said it won't be here anymore nothing lasts forever Because whatever company along the line, somewhere along the line, it's going to happen. I might not happen two years from now. It might not happen three years from now. I might decide one day to go, you know what? I'm getting old. I want to retire. And I want to sell it. And that means some other company will pick up the technology. And they'll basically are not going to charge you $160 a quart. I guarantee you that. There ain't nobody, nowhere near that. It might not even touch your hands at all. They might decide we sold technology before and it never even made it to the consumer. It went straight into corporate. But sooner or later, I got to retire. I'm 53 years old. I want to be able to sit down and enjoy life and be able to get up and get down and what other stuff I want to do. You know what I mean? I got probably another three more years, probably another, I don't know. I don't really know, but they're probably about two or three years I'm going to retire. I wanted to retire because I got, like I told y'all, I got a, I got a, I got a very heavy settlement coming through from some jokers that messed me up pretty bad, and, and they're gonna pay me a lot of money. But you know, I'm taking that money and investing it into projection screens because I do want a screen with my name on it. You know what I mean? Even before I retire, I definitely want to get into that field of projection screens, and motorized screens, and all that stuff. I want to get into that field. So you know, I got another three years left to me. And on top of that, I'm excited about that whole mapping thing, man. That's got me like pumped up. You know what I mean? So, you know, I want to get into that field too, you know? So, you know, I got three, four more years. I think I got left to keep doing this. And after that, you know, I just want to sit back and just watch the squirrels. That's what I want to do. I think that's what anybody wants to do. Just sit back and relax. Passion for something, yeah. But after a while, you know, just have to uh, retire. But until then, I'm having fun. Really? Man, this is why I mean I never ever get that's why I hate turning on this system. It is freaking what time is it in the morning? I know somebody ain't gaming this early in the morning. 851, are you freaking kidding me? It's got to be my people got days off.
That's the thing about it. When they're off, I'm working. So at 8, I can't do gaming at 8.51 in the morning. I don't think anyone do game. Oh, I get quick, quick. I got things to do. So I gotta go feed my squirrels, gotta feed my cat, I gotta feed more demonstrations, I have to finish doing the research on the mapping and all that stuff. And she's gonna have to wait. And this is what she'll do. And she'll go in and she'll <laughs> she'll basically start calling my phone over and over again. And I've explained to her, like, look, if I hang up on you twice, that means I'm in the stream. Eight o'clock. God, I even haven't had breakfast yet. I give all my glory to my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ for giving me the ability to design such amazing stuff. Always. I'm saying that with the black technology. Black technology can read white. It can read white levels. Now, it's no white levels aren't going to be as white as a white screen or a light gray screen, but it reads white levels high enough where the screen doesn't come out so dark that you can't see it. We've been telling y'all that. I've been telling y'all that for the longest time. Like those black screens, that's why you're seeing images pop up on the screen so clear, so clear that you can see it. That screen has code in it, allowed to be able to read white light. So that any black service can pull contrast. The important thing is having the ability to pull white light. The black silvers are coded. They can pull contrast levels. You know, black silver pull con gray screen pull a, a Starfield demonstration outside at a 190 degree viewing angle at six o'clock in the evening on a thousand lumen projector. It's reading the black, it's reading the black contrast is coming off the projector. And it doesn't make a difference if the projector has, and keep in mind, I'm using a Sony projector out there. That projector doesn't even have a contrast rating on it. It's that old. But it can pick it up. Which kind of boggles the mind a little bit there when you really think about that. I mean, if the projector doesn't have a contrast rating on it, and the projector is producing black, then it really makes a difference. The screen is actually reading the coding, allowing it to be able to produce a black level, even though the screen is gray and not black. Now, to take that coding even farther to the next level, actually redesigning it. And, and, and trying to give you an understanding on how the screen is reading, we make the screens different colors. So that way, if you see a purple screen, most people would think, all right, everything on that screen is gonna come out purple. No, it's not gonna come out purple because you have to go beyond that. You have to think beyond the color of what you're seeing on the screen. You have to look at the coding that's actually in the screen. So imagine having a coding that each one of those particular codes has the ability to read color that comes off the projector. There you go. And that's what you're seeing. So how long does it take to make a coding like that? Can't tell you that. Can't tell you what's in it. That's what the trademark secret is for. That's why I said that. At this particular level on how I'm thinking now, don't see anything else. I don't see anything else as I see. I don't see the Jamies. I don't see the DMP Supernovas. I don't see the Black Diamonds. I don't see any of them now on this level where I'm at. There's no such thing as calibrating your projector or that dumb nonsense worrying about it. No. This is a whole different generation of technology now. Coding. This is freaking insane. Now, could we make it hologrammed? Yes, we can. Cause that's what I'm working on for the 3D mapping. I'm working on a hologram coding. That's actually going to enhance the ability of a 3D projector. And we might even make it crystal clear. If we make it crystal clear, that means it won't alter or change the object of which it's coded on. Let's say you want to do a car 
and you want to 3D map the car, but you want the image to stand out. You can actually make it invisible so it doesn't actually alter or change the color of the car, but it changes and alters the coating on the projector that's actually producing the images on the surface. You're mad. You're absolutely mad. Not mad. I'm actually quite happy all the time. Not mad. You can read black too. When I sat there and told y'all what? Last month, that you haven't seen anything yet, you were working on some insane stuff. When I tell you that, I don't show you everything that we're working on. Now, if I show you this stuff, what do you think we're working on next? The whole object is to develop technology that can do crazy, amazing things that won't cost you an arm and a leg. That's the whole purpose. Now for the corporations, that's a different story. But for my customers, that's something else. So that's what I'm saying. We're trying to develop stuff that, you know, you don't have to go through all this crazy enough of calibrating, whether you have too much light in the environment, all that other nonsense, screens washing out and fading. And you have no choice because you got to buy the bottom dollar screens because that's all you can afford can't afford the Dark Star 9, if you can't afford the, um, the, um, the, um, the Elite um, um, Great Cinema 5D, then you got to settle with the white screen because that's all the money you have. That's bull. That shouldn't be like that. It should, you should be able to get a high performance screen that shouldn't cost your arm a leg. And you should be using a fully lit environment without no problem whatsoever. And you don't have to spend a lot of money for an expensive projector. Go and buy yourself an eBay projector at 720p because I'm using 720p right now in the demonstration. Should have been like that from the beginning. Companies got greedy. Oh, but if you want this particular setup, you gotta spend five thousand dollars for the screen and another three thousand dollars for the projector. That's eight grand right there. And you still can't use it in a fully lit environment. And it may or may not be ultra short though compatible. You might have to spend a little money if you want that option. All right, people. I love you all, but I got to go. Thank you all for your time. Be safe and God bless. I have no idea, but I'm behind the camera dancing to it right now. I freaking love this song. But y'all have a blessed day.